Jesus, thank you for everybody for joining me on the Michael Tobin Show once again. Um, I am going back five years with a five-year-old broadcast from October of 2011. So please bear with me. This was probably my most difficult broadcast from five years ago and includes part of my testimony of divorce, salvation, and raising my children as a single dad, as well as partaking in the Great Commission spreading the gospel in all the ways I knew to do. It's not the typical broadcast production in the presence of a production team or in front of a congregation as it was in my living room by myself in front of my PC and a camera. Since this broadcast I'm already one year unemployed between October of 2015 until now. I have in the past year been tenacious in setting myself up for full-time ministry, broadcast, and disaster relief, as well as have also completed my first book in Kindle e-book form. And you could go on Amazon.com and just look up my name, Michael D. Tobin, and it'll bring you up to my uh, e-book, Making America Righteous Again from Bitterness to a Delight. And it has 13 awesome chapters and also contains part of my testimony as well as uh, a lot of life's events, life's lessons from the past 25 years of being back from a 10-year backslide. So <clears throat> since then, uh, past 25 years of, of uh, lessons from uh, being back with the Lord and active in ministry. So truthfully, I am in dire straits and in need of listener support to pay my rent and bills and to be able to respond as a chaplain with the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team, or BGRRT, to our many disasters here in the United States. So please be blessed with my message on Rehoboth and God's miraculous grace, mercy, and provision. And this is from October of 2011. Evident that being Christian really is not a bed of roses, and we would be remiss to promise people that if when they become uh, Christians with Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that things will be easy. Um, we tend to read the scriptures and try to come up with a formula to have a seamless, painless life but one promise that is true is that um, in regards to the scripture that says consider your trials joy um, the good part about being Christian is whatever we go through with Jesus uh, as the one that we are looking forward to um, with him as our Lord and Savior and when we are faithful to come to the Lord in prayer, to offer everything in prayer, um, we come through every one of those trials. And it is possible to come through the trial seamless, and then when we do, we can look back at it and consider it joy. That is the 
one of the best parts of being a Christian because I can attest that every single trial that I've gone through, at least in the past 22 years that I have been following the Lord, I look back at those trials and I consider a joy. And the only thing that I ever regret is I wish that I would have been a little bit more um, a little bit more patient and have more faith and not as uptight as I get when I go through things but I will tell you this and I'm being truthful and uh, personally, I, I really don't know too many uh, believers who do this, but bad things happen in my family. Bad things happen in my walk. I see bad things. And instead of portraying my stress over situations, I just sit down. I sit down, I work throughout the day at my job. Um, and people I speak with or when I go home I more often than not I don't focus on on the problems and the challenges and also quite often I complain and when I'm complaining it is more in a sense of getting uh, things off my shoulder so in no way do I want to portray myself to my friends as uh, being a complainer and uh, I always tell them that I says you know how much more can a person stand when especially in this day and age and that's why I want to come to you today and by the way I'm calling this uh, this uh, series uh, another momentous occasion instead of 60 second warm-up that seems a little funny. So I, I'm, I'm calling it another momentous occasion. And, and my title for today is, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. With the question, where is your Rehoboth? And that's R-E-H-O-B-O-T-H. And... So what I want to do is I want to read from the scriptures in Genesis where one of the 10 or 11 instances of the word Rehoboth is found and I want to include three other words that are only in one scripture in the Bible and this is uh, when Isaac was traveling after the death of his mother and his father Abraham. Genesis 26, starting at verse 1. And there was a famine in the land, beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him, and said, Go down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee, for unto thee, and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thee, uh, will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar, and the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, She is my sister, for he feared to say she is my wife, lest, said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebekah, because she was fair to look upon. And it came to pass, when he had been there a long time, that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety she is thy wife. And how saidst thou, she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, Lest I die for her. And Abimelech said, Go 
what is this thou hast done unto us? One of the people might lightly have lain with your wife, and thou shouldest have brought guiltiness upon us. And Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He that toucheth this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then Isaac sowed in the land, and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him for all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father. The Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar, and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley, and found there a well of springing water. And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, the water is ours, and he called the name of the well Esek, because they strove with him. And they digged another well, and strove for that also, and he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence, and digged another well, and for they that, and for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth, and he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. And stopping here, this is, the, this is the third well that Isaac and with his herdmen had dug. The first two were contentious, and the third one, nobody strove with them, so they gave it a better name and called it Rehoboth. And, and the meaning of Rehoboth means wide streets and places. Um, now, continuing in verse 23, And he went up from thence to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants digged a well. Then Abimelech went to him from Gerar and Ahuzeth, one of his friends, and Phicol, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing you hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, Let there be now an oath between us, even between us and you, and let us make a covenant with you, that thou wilt do us no hurt, as we have not touched thee, and as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent you away in peace. Thou art now the blessed of the Lord. And he made them a feast, and they did eat and drink. And they rose up betimes in the morning, and swear one to another. And Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. And it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well which they had digged. And he said unto him, We have found water. And he called it Sheba. Therefore the name of the city is Beersheba unto this day. And Esau was forty years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beri, the Hittite, and Bashmeth, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, which were a grief of mine unto Isaac and to Rebekah. So you see here in the Old Testament days, uh, one can be blessed of the Lord, but still have a grief of mind and still have troubles from surroundings. And now let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, which is a faith chapter. And I believe that uh, Paul is the author of, uh, of Hebrews. And starting at verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. And, and when you go down to the bottom of this chapter, the last, it, it also says, And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, 
God having provided some better thing for us that they without as should not be made perfect and, as, and so at the top of the chapter and the bottom of the chapter these men all had a good report amen they had good reports and they looked for something they 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 strived for things and down in verse 10 chapter 11 say verse 9 by faith no verse 8 by faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he had he should after receive for inheritance obeyed and he went out not knowing where he went by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob the heirs with him of the same promise for he looked for a city which hath foundations whose builder and maker is God through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Now I want to conclude this by saying that these are tough times and with myself as an example, uh, this is the year 2011 tomorrow is the first day of November 2011 so it's almost 2012 and I want to start my timeline from the time now I'm in San Diego and I was raised in San Diego and my mom lives in the Mojave Desert which is about 226 miles from here and uh, after my breakup from my ex-wife I spent a year um, in torment because divorce is the most horrible thing in the world it, 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 it is pretty much I won't say exactly specifically or, or definitely it is the worst thing in the world but when you're going through a divorce if you loved your spouse it is the most horrible thing and it the pain lasted for five years. The first year, I was kind of like uh, the guy in Genesis named Jephthah. Jeph, J E P H T H A H. That's pretty close. Um, he left his people and dwelt with a bunch of useless men. The Bible says, and uh, he ended up coming back as a mighty man of God uh, but nevertheless that's what I did for a year I was just uh, hanging out with friends sleeping on a friend's couch and uh, thank God he took me in and uh, I, I got to the point to where I, I had to get on my knees and ask Jesus to come into my life I finally did that and in my bedroom at my mom's house in the Mojave Desert I got on my knees and I asked Jesus to come into my life, to come into my heart, and uh, told him that I am sorry for taking him for granted and thanking him for sticking close to me regardless of how, how I was living my life. And uh, I didn't know it at the time, but I was praying similar, similar words to what is in the scriptures. Jesus uh, is, is a friend that sticks closer to a brother and uh, that's how Jesus was regardless of how I was so that was in 1989 when I came to the Lord and uh, then on it was like a roller coaster it was uh, a year after I came back to the Lord no the same year I came back I came to the Lord in June back to the Lord because I was backslidden since I was seven pretty much I came back to him in 89 in June and that same month I uh, was led to a Bible school in Virginia and uh, ever since then God has done great and mighty things through me and I have just had the privilege of following the Lord in many many things since then and God has uh, blessed me I 
uh, was able to live a great part of the time between then and now with my children, my three children, and I did not have a contentious uh, divorce, and I'm just blessed. And uh, I ended up going to school, getting a two-year degree from a junior college, and I also spent five and a half years at a Bible Bible school. And uh, af after college, I tried to move to San Diego, and there was no work. That was 1997. Uh, there was no work. So I am likening my life to these three wells that Isaac and his servants dug. I tried going back to where, where I was at. There was contention. I tried going back to San Diego. That was another contention. And, and then I was able to go to Oregon with my children. And I found a job in a week and I stayed in Oregon for seven and a half years. And when I got to Oregon, I was so thankful that I was reminded of the three wells that Isaac and his servants dug. And I said, this is my Rehoboth. This is where the Lord has made room for us, myself and my three children. God made room for me there. That lasted seven and a half years, and I was blessed to come back down to San Diego again, where I have been since 2003. And the Lord made room for me in San Diego. And uh, I've had several jobs since 2003, and the current one... It's the best job I think I've ever had, uh, financially speaking. And I'm, I, was, I don't have my Ponderosa ranch like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob did. You know, they all had their spreads with their animals. And, and uh, praise God, I, my, my dream is to have a ranch with a few horses and cows and some friends that can uh, help me with that. That would be awesome. There. And uh, so, you know, that's my dream. I don't tell people of my dreams. My dream is to have a ranch. And uh, meantime, in the past 22 years, I've gone to uh, different countries, Jordan, Syria, and Israel, two years in a row with uh, Bible school. I went to Jamaica with Bible school. I've, I've been to Mexico several times. My first missionary trip was when I was 10 years old. My job was to play with the little Mexican kids in the in a, a, a dump while the bigger kids and the adults were washing feet and uh, giving clothes and clean water. We, we brought truckloads of clean water and uh, had church service there and, and food and that was my first missionary trip and that's where uh, I believe that I felt the Lord's calling that I want to be a missionary and uh, like Jephthah I think I had to go and you know sow my oats for quite a few years um, not that that's what a person needs to do there's people that have never known a uh, quote sinful life but God looks at the heart and you will see many people that never did drugs before, never committed adultery on their, their spouses, and, and who never had a foul mouth. And they will tell you that they were living in sin also before they came to know Jesus. Um, so no person is actually better than the other, and no person is worse than the other. Um, so anyways, we're all looking for a place. You know that song that we uh, heard in the beginning, You Are My Hiding Place? That was uh, the theme of Corey Ten Boom's story. And, uh, you know, it, and, it, and it relates to all of us. We're all looking for a place. So my question, where is your Rehoboth? Um, God is faithful to to uh, complete a good work in you and in me. And I'm telling you that if you do not have Jesus in your life, get him in your life.
If you know a better way, let me know. But I know there is no better way. So, this is pretty difficult because it's part of my testimony. Um, so I'm just going to leave you with that. Where is your Rehoboth? How many wells have you dug? How much contention? Um, and then, when you do get to your place where there was no contention, there was harmony, more contention will come up, but as a Christian, you're not going to be shielded from contention, but when there is contention, there is a way out of it. And you will look back with joy that you were actually able to come out of that contention. And that's just the way it is. This has been another momentous occasion. Well, for those of you who are just uh, joining, uh, thank you for joining me on the Michael Tobin Show. That was me from uh, 2011, October 29 of 2011. And uh, it was like a 25-minute uh, broadcast, YouTube, actually, uh, dealing with uh, part of my uh, personal testimony of uh, divorce, salvation, and raising my children. And uh, in between coming back to the Lord after a 10-year backslide, in 1989 I came back to Jesus full on, full-fledged. And um, since then it's just been um, a roller coaster. And it was kind of a sombering uh, me, you know, watching myself talk on, on YouTube and, and, and listening. And... Uh, it's almost uh, sad, actually, because I'm going through a desert place once again. My past job was seven years, and and uh, I won't get into all that, but I've been full-on uh, attempting to uh, set myself up for full-time ministry for the past year, uh, doing a few side jobs here and there, you know, trying to pay my uh, rent and, and bills, and... Uh, but anyways, it's it's amazing what I just said at the end of this broadcast that we, we always do come out of our trials, our desert places. Uh, so please pray for me. I'm in a desert place right now. And I am going to conclude this with the song that I had at the beginning, The Neelands, uh, You Are My Hiding Place. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Sure.